Welcome back. Uh, today it'll be uh, part six on the cargo, and I'll actually be um, explaining how I fall into this actual, uh, uh, I guess, saga. So, the uh, agent P, he is um, he is not happy with his results that he is um, given uh, regarding uh, his theory of the port director being um, in on the actual three-ton load. Being corrupt, how can he not know? So that's falling on deaf ears. So he makes another mistake. He contacts a um, investigative news agency, and that is uh, backed by a very large network. So he makes contact. Um, they send out a uh, a reporter down to. His location. By the way, uh, what he did was a big no-no. You don't do that. You don't do that in any for any kind of way. You don't. You don't do that because of the fact that you have to keep it real. They are the press. They can twist your words around, and they will twist your words around just to make it more interesting. So, could you imagine these false accusations and then to top off, they're going to run into an, uh, an investigative news report. A lot of quotes, a lot of information is going to get twisted around to make it more of a uh, an interest to your viewing audience on a Sunday evening, right? So, as he is feeding them information and actually uh, taking a little bit longer than they would like just to jump on the story for it, it cools off, correct? Um, these editors from their network are contacting this, inve this investigative reporter and telling him basically, hey, uh, something's not right, just drop it, kill it, just We'll take our losses, right? Well, this investigative reporter took it upon himself, said, "Yo, he he didn't comply to their actual to their uh, demands, and uh, went straight forward and continued to, to do his reporting, and was eventually given false information, false documents, uh, and he took this guy's word." I. In the next video, I will get into details of how he actually. Chose to miss, I guess. He chose to miss, or he just overlooked a lot of information that didn't make any kind of sense. He was not any part. This agent was not any in any part uh, um, connected to internal affairs and you know, the, the attorney general or um, any kind of a uh, uh, supporting role to fight fight correct corruption. He just took it upon himself. So as this is going on. And uh, you could feel the tension at the port, but at the same time, it was business as usual because you still got to conduct your business. There's still business to be made. It's, it's, a, it's a business. It's a, it's a Monday through Friday, you know, in certain hours. So you got to get stuff done within a lot, a lot of time. So our team shows up one day and we're working. I get assigned the actual, the entrance where every vehicle needs to be actually allowed to be in so therefore nobody sneaks in nobody that's not supposed to be there actually shows up right so as I'm conducting my uh, inbound a uh, four-door import sedan nothing new nothing fancy comes by the gate so it's a slow morning nothing to do actually and I pull the car over and I asked them um, asked the actual driver um uh, if you can step out of the vehicle, right? Step out of the vehicle. And I said, uh, may I conduct your, uh, search your vehicle? He says, by all means, go ahead. So, like I said, it was nothing, nothing, nothing really to do, you know, nothing really to do. And he told me his name. I asked him his name. He gave me his name. I did not know who the port director was at the time, by the way. I, 
I did not know. I have no idea how he looked or what he drove. All I saw was this, this person, gentleman, male, in a imported sedan, not new, but not old, but it's, you know, four-door sedan. So I started going through his trunks and everything, and all of a sudden, his custom supervisor goes by and jumps on me and starts yelling, saying, what am, what am I doing? Why am I inspecting the port director's vehicle in such detail? And I, I'm startled because this supervisor is actually yelling at me, right? And I'm hunched down in the trunk, and I, I look back up to see who's actually yelling at me. That's when I hear the, the actual the driver of that vehicle pull the supervisor. No, no, no. Let him finish his job. Let him continue his inspection of my vehicle. He's doing his job. Let him finish. And then um, I was almost done. But then again, at the same time, I kind of like backed off. You know what I mean? I didn't realize who he was. Now I know who he is, right? And I could still hear the supervisor mumbling, mumbling. And uh, I finished my inspection. And I allowed him to, to continue his um, his day. And he he said, you know what? Thank you for, uh, you know, for showing interest in vehicles that come in here, you know. And I'd like to thank you for not... Um, being favor to play favoritisms for anybody coming in, especially for me, for me, me, me being a port director. Uh, I said, oh, you know, no problem. I was kind of embarrassed at the same time, but then I thought about it after everything came out, after everything was said and done, like with the actual tanker. And I said, he was probably glad that I did search him at that certain level to kind of help in his defense. If there was a, a need for him to go to trial or something or for his defense, that's the way I took it at the end. But now I stand out like a big sore thumb, right? If now if they thought that we were part of the Inspector General or the actual internal affairs going into different facilities, different ports, now could you imagine what I did conduct this inspection on a port director that's being investigated by internal affairs? So that just put a little bit more heat on us. I left a couple of months later, um, he, um, that actual port director, he um, wrote me a nice letter and uh, thanking me and uh, when I when I actually uh, got assigned somewhere else. And uh, so the next episode, we're going to be uh, talking about how this news, this investigative news agency got duped by this agent. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys.